Mexican citizens living in Arizona who need health care are getting help from their home country without having to cross the border. Services offered at mobile health clinics have already proven life-saving for some. Nancy Montoya reports. Do you remember when, uh, when we went to Disney? And we Francisco to and his wife Gabriela say every day is a miracle. Both discovered they had life-threatening diabetes and hypertension before they say it was too late. It's important for me to stay healthy for my family because they depend on me and they rely on me, they love me, and if I'm, I'm not around, they will miss me. An A1C test measures the average blood glucose levels over a couple of months. Normal is six or less, but Francisco and Gabriela's A1C was over 12. I knew that number is bad. It has to be five or six at most, and uh, I started getting worried. The couple discovered their condition by chance. At a school health fair, volunteers from a mobile health clinic tested them both. Three days before that, Gabriela's mother had died from complications caused by diabetes. She says she was in a panic. Yes, I was very worried, said Gabriela. Because, she says, I hadn't even buried my mother. Gabby and Francisco call the mobile unit that provided the testing Ángeles Sobre Ruedas, Angels on Wheels. In just two years, the mobile health clinics, part of the Juntos por la Salud, Together for Health program, have tested almost 10,000 people from underserved and mostly Latino and Mexican immigrant communities in Pima and Maricopa counties. These mobile units, these uh, vans, are about 120,000 apiece. Dr. Cecilia Rosales is the associate dean for the University of Arizona's College of Public Health. She oversees the mobile clinics in Arizona and says the funding comes from Mexico's government. Phoenix was one of the first cities with a mobile unit paid for by the Mexican Ministry of Health. The purpose is to offer basic screening for chronic diseases like diabetes and hypertension to the often invisible Mexican immigrant communities living in the U.S. Now there is a mobile unit in Tucson. You will find two in Arizona, one in Tucson and one in, in Phoenix. You'll find one in Los Angeles, Las Vegas, Denver, Chicago, Dallas, Raleigh, Orlando, and Miami. The Mexican government is expected to keep adding these mobile units in other cities with large Mexican immigrant communities. Almost 20 years ago, the Mexican government launched Ventanillas de Salud, Windows to Health. Again, the Mexican Ministry of Health took on an ambitious project to place health clinics in every Mexican consulate office in the U.S. Think about it, there are 50 consulate offices in the U.S. It is the only country that has as many consulate offices because of the needs for consular documentation, you know, passports and things like that. And so why not also offer primary prevention uh, services? But there are many Mexican immigrants who never have a reason to go to the Mexican consulate office. And for those fearing deportation who live under the radar, well, says Dr. Rosales, they have other priorities. You're too busy trying to make a living, trying to put food on the table. You're probably working two or three jobs. And so you really end up receiving medical services when it's really too late. So you end up at an emergency room. There is a fear that enters you, says Gabby. She adds, when you are here illegally, you can't do many things, and you are afraid to ask questions. Now, to serve the population, especially those with no legal documentation to be in the U.S., Dr. Rosales wrote a grant and received funding, again from the Mexican Ministry of Health. Two years ago, the first and second phase of these mobile units launched. 
Dr. Asalis and her team go into the community to find the areas most in need. For example, in Phoenix, a mobile unit spent a Friday morning in the parking lot of Glen Downs Elementary School. This is a school with a high immigrant population. Vivian Nash is the principal. We are a school that's kinder through eighth grade. We have 750 students. Uh, we're 100% free and reduced lunch, and so we're a Title I school as well. I'm told that the median um, income for our families is 35000 So this is one of the um, lower uh, socioeconomic neighborhoods, and so health care is a concern, and just having access to proper health care, proper nutrition. So if we have uh, any kind of partnership that can help us uh, to uh, bring those services into our families, we absolutely do that. Principal Nash says parents who arrive for health screenings are never asked about their citizenship status. Good thing, says Gabriela, because had that been a requirement, she and Francisco may have never received the information that they are convinced helped to save their lives.